If you can't afford a house in your preferred location, should you buy a unit or maybe a townhouse? Well, it depends on you and your unique 3P mix. Welcome to Your First Home Buyer Guide, the podcast for first home buyers who want to get it right. I'm Megan and that was Veronica. We're both buyers agents and probably old enough to be your mums. But that's a good thing because between us, we've got over 40 years experience and we are going to share with you bucket loads of stories about avoidable mistakes. Together, we're going to make sure that you get unbiased and real information that you can rely on so you can get where you want to be without missing a step. Now, we've got loads of great tips for you in this episode. And if you'd like more useful tools, head over to the website, homebuyeracademy.com.au. There you'll find free checklists that you can download, a free mini course on how to price a property and our where to buy a workshop for only $39. Priceless stuff, really. Bargain. But before we get into the interesting stuff in this week's episode, here's the boring bit, the disclaimer. You, of course, know that nothing in this podcast is to be taken as personal advice. We always recommend getting the advice of an expert in their field of expertise. Now, we've done our very best to ensure that the content is correct at the time of recording, but things change. So check with the relevant government authority or your advisors to get the most up-to-date information. In episode 38, we compared buying a house to buying an apartment. And today we're talking about the pros and cons of buying a townhouse versus an apartment. But before we get into that, uh, Megan, in the video behind you, you have a special (laughs) house and uh, it's quite on topic here. Because this is is my nightmare. This is New York. These are (gasps) the stacked up apartment complexes in New York. I cannot think of anything worse than living in this kind of environment. It would, like not having your feet on the ground would be horrible. I just can't fathom it. The buildings are so hideous. Yep. That honestly, I thought it must be a gula, you know, in, in Russia or somewhere. It looks you know. third world, doesn't it? But this yeah. is New York. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I can't yeah. tell you which borough it is, but, oh, yeah, looks out of Manhattan, looks like it's all the way down the other end. So um, anyway, yeah. there you go. When they do they, an aerial shot, you know, do those drone shots of New York and the, the various shows and movies that are on, they never take that angle. Oh, that's I wouldn't not recommend the angle. I would not recognize it. <laughs> okay. And it looks cold and bleak too. So <laughs> <laughs> all right. So don't go buying one of those apartments. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can afford a New York apartment, you're probably not a first time buyer, let's be honest. <laughs> Quite possibly not. <laughs> they are super expensive for tiny, tiny little shoe boxes. But Veronica, you and I, we hear the question a lot, your house or apartment, all the time it comes up, which one should we buy? Well, there's no set answer to that as we bang on about all the time, but there is an in-between option that is well worth considering. And it's, you know, a townhouse or a villa that isn't so much stacked. Both have pros and cons, of course, and both will have strata. So the reason we decided to do this episode was it, it was asked of us a few times, well, you know, what is a townhouse? How does that work? Um, but also it's to, I guess, to just raise the awareness that there is another option apart from just choosing between a freehold house and an apartment. Yeah. You know, it's funny in certain areas, you'll find there are more options in between apartments and houses. So, and there's, you know, the middle ring of Melbourne, for instance, is apparently Mm. there's been quite a lot of townhouse development in recent years, but even before that, there used to be these villa units complexes yeah. and there's the odd villa unit complex in sydney i don't know if you have many in in brizzy um, well, they're not as profitable for developers so well, definitely and, and not. we'll get into this about why there's less and less of these complexes being built um, and it's important to note because it does provide a little bit of scarcity in townhouses but yeah. there's not many villas um unless no. it's outskirts and because the villas are basically a single story um unit effectively so yeah. they they're spread out over um, a, you know, a big block of land. They might have knocked down a couple of houses at some point in history and maybe put on maybe four or six units, villa units. So there's this single level. And you know what? They were sort of, I think, originally targeted towards downsizers mm. and people who wanted single mm. level living, but then... They weren't ready for retirement village, but they didn't want all of the upkeep of all the grounds. 
Yeah, they didn't want to be in a unit where they might have had to tackle yeah. stairs and that sort of thing as well. And they like the idea of having their own little garden. And interestingly enough, you've got young families who will also like the same things, a, you know, a level, a garden. Um, so you can see that there's a bit of an appeal there for some first home buyers looking Absolutely. at these villas. Yeah. But they're really scarce. They're scarce yeah. everywhere. Um, and then the townhouses typically are two-storey maybe three, sometimes even four. So obviously they fit more on a site and quite often you've got an outdoor space as well, mm. a garden as well. Um, so there's sort of like that in-between option really, aren't they? Both there's a lot between. of appeal there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's break it down. So the difference between them is apartments are stacked on top of each other. If you just kind of think of it as, you know, you're building your Lego levels. Yes, I'm a mother of boys. Um, <laughs> and they're usually larger complexes with smaller floor areas per unit. So generally speaking single level but you can get two level apartments um and certainly as you move up into sort of the more prestige apartment market there can be two or three level apartments but generally speaking apartments are going to be stacked on top of each other so you may have an upper neighbor and lower neighbor neighbor several down below several up above you might be at the top you might be at the bottom um they generally have a balcony maybe the ground floor ones might have a courtyard um the thing to be really aware of in both apartments and townhouse complexes is, is that outdoor area on title mm-hmm. or is it community or uh, exclusive use apologies? So is or, it on is it title? common title or, yeah, com- or is, com- yeah. common property and nobody so, has exclusive use? Yeah, and someone's just put a fence around it, but they don't have any entitlement to use it <laughs> the way that they are. And you have a great example of that that, that you've talked about um, when you were doing the show and that, that one in Byron Bay. Um, so townhouses then are a little bit different in that they're, they, they you, you don't have the stacked nature of them. They might be one, two, or three levels, but it's you. You're, you're sort of the airspace and your uh, common wall is is either side or, you know, front and back, whatever the case may be, or freestanding. So you might not have common walls and we quite like freestanding ones um, from an investment perspective, all other things being um, being from an investment point <laughs> of view, <laughs> ticking all the boxes. Um and they're often larger complexes. So, so the definition of townhouse is essentially you know, two or more common grounds, um, community or strata title, um, maybe common walls, maybe freestanding. But sometimes they've got things like pools and tennis courts and generally a bigger land area, more space between the properties. Um, so if you think of apartments as stack living, um, townhouses are more sort of um, level living, if you like, where your neighbours are stuck on the side of you rather than on top of you. You've all got a front door that faces the street or faces a common sort of access point as opposed to a corridor. A corridor or a hallway yeah. or yeah, something like and that. You do find sometimes in these huge complexes where you've got both apartments and townhouses, but often mm. townhouses you'll find in small complexes, they might have, you know, five or 10 or, or you know, 20, for instance, Um so it's more common, I guess, to find townhouses um, that would face the street, you know, so that some of them even look like they might just be a modern terrace, but mm. they're actually strata. And, in fact, some of the some people call townhouses that are actually strata, uh, uh, Torrens title, where there's no common property. Sometimes you've actually got these de- these um, new developments where they've effectively just built a row of terraces and they, and they don't necessarily um, have to be strata. But generally speaking, they're going to be more expensive. Yeah, you know, there's some so you, sort of commonality around it, whether it's a wall, whether it's yeah. grounds that the that, that people share the cost of maintaining. There's some sort of commonality around it as opposed to a freehold house where you own between the boundaries of, of that po- property and you're responsible for them. Um, now, I, I wanted to talk about why I mentioned a bit earlier that townhouses have an element of scarcity to them. And, and the reason for that is that what, the zoning for a townhouse in most local government areas is the same for as it is for a small complex of units. So there can be differences between the higher rise um, units and townhouse zoning, but generally speaking, you can put a block of, say, three levels of units on the same zoning as you can um, at a two-level townhouse, but you actually get a developer will get more properties to sell out of a unit complex as they will in a townhouse complex just because of the um, the way that the, the ground floor is calculated and how many they can fit on. So so going, you know, almost well, in, in maybe the last 10 or 12 years, I've rarely seen a, a townhouse complex be built where it 
where a unit complex would actually fit because the developer would make more profit out of the units. So what, what that means from a scarcity point of view is there's not a lot of these, these townhouse complexes being built now because the highest and best use for the land is actually apartments. Mm. Yeah, and it's it's interesting actually because you do look at um, development of um, a lot of multi uh, well high density living in a lot of areas, and they've sort of targeted the developers have just worked out well how many apartments what's the best return on my dollars yep. basically on my investment, and so they carve it up that way. And you know a lot of people argue, oh well, the market demands one and two bedroom apartments because that's why they're building them. It's like actually not necessarily mm-hmm. they're just dishing that up to the market. And often it's investors and first-time buyers buying that stuff. And it's not and they've necessarily- got fabulous marketing packages and they pay yes. huge commissions to the people that are selling them. That's it. And it makes it, you know, it sounds good and all the rest of it, but at the end of the day, and they make more money, so that's why they're going to do it that way. But And that's why you do have a shortage of even, forget um, townhouses from a good three-bedroom apartments. There's just not enough. Yeah. You know, whenever you find a good one, it's like, yay. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that I build more of them. There would be massive demand, but it's just, it does come down to that return on their Mm. investment. So, okay, shall we run through some of the pros and cons of apartments versus townhouses? And, and, and one thing that you said in the intro was that it, it really depends on your unique three P mix, right? And if you've done our where to buy tutorial, which we, it's only $39, honestly, if you are trying to work out where you should buy or what you should buy, that will help you clarify that. Um, yeah, it's not the you, answer to the question. It's the no. process to find the answer to the question for you. Exactly. And not only that, but the answer will depend on your unique needs, but also depend on where you're looking. Because there will be certain areas where you would not, um, you know, there's one type of property that you would try not to buy, for instance. So you're not going to try to buy a unit in an area where there's just heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of units you might actually move into a different location. Then you might be looking in an area and you think, right, I'm going to buy a villa unit because they're single level and I've got a garden, but they don't exist. So (laughs) you've got to understand what's available in the area. Yeah, if you're looking for that unicorn, you're going to be looking for a very, very long time, get very frustrated. Do you remember remember we did um, an interview with some um, some of the students that had actually purchased and they said, wish you'd warned us about the whiskey. Um, What was it, the whiskey... Uh, meter. The the longer we looked, the more frustrated we became. The more whiskey we drank. Uh, <laughs> Do you yes. I, I can't remember if it was Alice or I don't know, Alice and Mike. Um. Anyway, yes. that was it. Was it, it, it? But it does become frustrating, and people are the most frustrated. We did that interview with Andrew, the mortgage broker, who talked about people who enjoy the process of buying are generally the ones that do it more quickly but without haste Mm. more quickly than the ones that take much much longer because they've got either analysis paralysis they're looking for the wrong thing or they're looking in the wrong place yeah um so getting that 3p mix right actually will help you enjoy the journey a lot more and get to the end of the journey a a lot more so so as you say you might look for an apartment in one area a townhouse in another a house in another whichever your 3p mix is right in different areas different locations and, and different price ranges so, you know, uh, a few years back in the last boom in Sydney, so we're talking, I don't know, probably 2015, maybe around there, and I remember we had a number of clients coming to us who had been looking for a long time and were basically browbeaten by the market. It was hard. It was a really grueling, hard market, and they had been wasting a lot of time because they didn't have that clarity, and they're also chasing unicorns and trying to, to and you know what's really funny, that when people are finding it difficult to find what they want within their budget, they start actually coming up with all these sort of harebrained schemes to solve the problem. And one of the ones that we hear so often was, I know, I'll buy something that needs to be knocked down and I'll knock it down and rebuild. And I'm like, on what planet does knocking down something and rebuilding sound easier than trying to find an existing property that suits your needs? You know what I mean? That that just is is really a good illustration of just how challenging it becomes. Desperate. Mm. And we had a number of people that came to us that had young children in particular. They needed a bit of outdoor space. They needed a certain amount of internal accommodation. They really you know, once you have kids, obviously your requirements for accommodation change and and location, all the rest of it. And they'd already established sort of ties. You know, the kids had gone to preschool Mm. in a certain area. They already had friends. They wanted them to continue going to school in that area, but they were getting priced out of these areas. And what we, we said to each of these clients at that time, because the market was moving so rapidly, it was like, well, we're going to do your, what we call it a getting starter session in our our business is the same as the, uh, the where to buy workshop. 
So we're going to do that. And then at the end of it, because it, the market was moving fast, they had these requirements and limited budget. We said, you've got to have a plan A, plan B, and plan C. Plan A is the house, where you want it to be within your budget. However, plan A is looking more and more like a unicorn, right? It's basically like that ship has sailed. Mm. So plan B, now we need to look at plan B. What is that? To stay in the area that you want to be in, to get the sort of property that's suitable for a young family, you need to look at townhouses. Or plan C is you need to draw a line in the sand. If you will not move out of that area, you can't change your budget and you won't look at townhouses, you're going to have to rent fest. Buy an investment mm. and stay renting. So that was sort of like we gave them a deadline to say, you know, have to make this call by X date because, you know, but you know, people really want to buy a home to live in. And each time we found a townhouse for them. And I don't know any of them that, that have moved out of it. So we're here we are in 2022. We're talking seven years now. I don't know any of them that aren't still in that in their townhouse, you know, so they, they've they they have worked in very well. Yeah, yeah, very, very yeah. well. And, and with, a, with a young family, there can be some facilities within the complexes that can be really beneficial. Mm. So maybe a pool, maybe a tennis court, maybe a play area, maybe adjoining parkland. These can all be quite positive things that can make up for the lack of yard space. So you yeah. might not fit the trampoline in the yard, but gee, you've got access to a pool and a tennis court is awesome for riding scooters around. So, so there's pros and cons to really think about there. Is but- it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, t- I've taken the kids to when the kids were young. I used to take them to tennis courts. To- <laughs> it's hilarious. The skate parks are a little rough with the teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the you know one of those biggest benefits of buying um, a townhouse versus an apartment certainly is that you've got generally more space and more outdoor space, and mm. that you've got that effectively it sort of works like a like a house. Like a mini house, yeah, mm. and and can often have very similar features to a house, um, but but at a lower buy-in price because you're not owning the land, but so you can stay, part, yeah, in your the, area that you want to be in that you want to be. Where land is expensive, mm. yeah. So the, the land component is the thing that you give up, but um, you own a small proportion to a to to a degree of the the greater strata title ownership of the property or the, the land that you sit on. So you're paying a bit more for the house or the property, the yeah, the property that sits on the land than the land itself. Um, but when you look at an apartment, I think one of the biggest things for me is not having someone up above and below is mm. maybe one of those big benefits of if you can choose between a house and a townhouse, is that your neighbours are beside you, not on top of you or below you. And here's a really practical um, application of that. If you want timber floors, right, and you're in an apartment, yep. you are going to have to put this special battening down. You may not actually be able to get, put you timber get floors. get approval. Yeah, and you may not be able to get suitable type of uh, flooring that isn't transferring noise down below. Or you might be in a building where they haven't had the rules in place and the person above you has put flooring in, either hasn't got approval or mm. didn't need to get approval mm. and clomp, clomp, clomp every time they wear high heels, you are going nuts. <laughs> So you don't get that. You can make your own. You can you can do whatever you want when you're when you're stacked above yourself, as opposed to stacked above or below other neighbours. So the multi level townhouse means that you've got more flexibility internally. Yeah, absolutely. That doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want whenever you want. There are still body corporate or strata owners corporations that um, that you need to seek approval from for certain things. Some things mm. you can do internally without any permission required whatsoever. Do a kitchen, a bathroom, you know, anything that doesn't require structural changes probably is within your scope to be able to do without approval. But then there are other things maybe to the, for those trades to be able to access the complex that you live in, you might mm. need permission for those trades to actually come in um, and to be utilising the roads and so forth that, that they need to to get to your, your um, townhouse. So, And logistically, you know, if you're doing that in an apartment, literally you've got to basically be carrying materials in and out, usually in lifts and there's, there's all sorts mm. of, in fact, there are, you know, you have to have bylaws written to allow you to do your renovation um, in an apartment, in in an apartment, you know, they're very strict rules in a townhouse. It's going to be case by case. Yeah. Yeah. And it depends how big it is. And like anything, even with a, a freehold home that you own, your neighbors have influence and they have an impact and, and they can be good. They can be horrible. It can be <laughs> a nightmare to live beside someone. 
whether they rent or or are owner occupiers, it, it, it you know personalities are, are going to clash in all sorts of different settings. So it's just that you're a bit tighter, a bit closer together when you're in a townhouse complex and you're right on top of each other and you're seeing each other in the hallways and and the uh, communal areas when you're in an apartment. So so a few pros and cons there, but you've got a better chance of escaping um, in and out of your garage from a townhouse than you do going in and out of the hallways and the lifts in any in a unit. You do. You can sort of avoid your neighbours a bit easier. I mean, one of the other pros for a townhouse is that you think about if you're in a house, right, and your neighbours are arcing up and being antisocial, um, you've got to go to the police or mm. maybe the council. You don't actually have a body corporate that is looking after the, the interests of the entire complex. And so in some regards, living in strata, whether it be an apartment or in townhouse, you've got a little bit more controls and, you know, and rules that people are meant to abide by. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Mm -hmm. if people aren't prepared to, you know, be, be socialized in that regard, they're probably not suited to living in strata or community title of accommodation. It's a good point, actually, because it's almost like having someone to elevate your complaint to. Um, Hmm. Because as you say, if you've got very limited scope when it's at a home, you've got to actually negotiate with people directly. Worst case scenario, get the police involved or counsel if it's, you know, dogs barking or, or certain things that councils will actually step in and be involved in. Um, but in that in that body corporate or that owner's corporation situation, you do have a bit of a hierarchy, a committee that you can air these grievances to. And if if these if the, the people that are causing you grief are breaching the bylaws, then there actually is good grounds to, uh, you know, for some sort of remedy to, to be put in place. Um, it may not be that, you know, they're evicted. It's not really the, the case. It's not what the bylaws are there for, but it is to have somebody else who can actually step in and say, well, actually, no, you're breaching the bylaws by doing that. You need to stop. Um, and uh, and that can be quite helpful, I think, having that that sort of um, um, care situation if people are, are working harmoniously and there you know, a couple of people who aren't being very harmonious, they can be dealt with. Yes. And you know, it's funny. It's like anything in life, isn't it? There's pros and cons of a lot. Of, there's the silver, the silver lining, or two sides of the coin, or that sort of thing. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, I don't want the control of living in strata, or I don't want to have to pay levies, or, yeah. or all these reasons why people might say, I don't want to live in an, you know, in an apartment or a townhouse for that matter." Mm. But it's like, well, the levies actually go to paying for ongoing upkeep, and and there's ways in which you've got to you've got to look after everything in a house if you buy house and you've got no real i guess um uh control over if the roof starts leaking you just gotta fix it you've got to fix it yeah you gotta you've <laughs> got to fix it you've got to fix it or if you don't you're the one suffering the consequences you know down the track so that the silver lining is that that's sort of all budgeted and and that's managed for it's you forced budgeting isn't it yeah. body corporate levies really that's what it is so you're paying for administrative aspects of managing the body corporate, which may be the building insurance, where you've got to pay building insurance anyway mm. if you own a house, um, the, the upkeep of the common areas, well, you'd have to do that yourself if, if you weren't paying it. But but in terms of the sinking fund or the capital works fund, that's just for saving, to have enough money there for when something goes wrong or a planned replacement of certain aspects of the buildings is is needed. So that, that's really what the sinking fund is. It's just for saving for the expected and the unexpected. Mm. So there's some reasons that people might buy an apartment. Like, for instance, I was doing a strategy session with a client last night and, and I'm like, well, you could go and buy an apartment in an area that's really urban, really in the thick of it. You know, it's a lot smaller than you would otherwise get if you moved a bit further out, but you have a great lifestyle. But if you are thinking that you might actually potentially couple up and have kids yeah. at some point, then you know you're going to outgrow it really fast and that it's going to incur additional costs in terms of um, upgrading or can you afford to keep it and buy something bigger? I mean, there's all those sort of things have to be considered because you will outgrow it a hell of a lot faster. Mm. So it all comes down to, I guess, how certain you are about your living circumstances in the, say, next five to ten years. If you uh, If there's a lot of opportunity for change and upheaval, then you want the most amount of flexibility in the property that you buy. So whether that be that you can have more people live there or you could rent out a room or you could move out yourself and rent the whole place out. Mm. Um, but if you are going to outgrow it, 
um, you know, if you had sort of scenario A, B and C and in scenarios B and C, you, you're going to outgrow the apartment, then that's a good case for thinking, well, longer term, uh, townhouse is going to suit you better and moving a bit, little bit further out is going to be a better option. So it all comes out. But if you did major mind up, you said, if you're going to be a single lady with a cat and that is it, <laughs> and you are happy with that, and that's, that's, that's your decision, no judgments, because I can absolutely see the appeal, you know, then go the small apartment in, in the really ultra urban area where you can, you can walk to the theaters and all that, all the things that you might want to do, um, because it will last you for the longer term. So, yeah, it, and it's, it's a real lifestyle choice then, isn't mm. it? So it's, it's thinking about, well, as you say, where am I in my life cycle? What might change in the coming five or 10 years? Remembering property is a long-term, um, outlook, not a short-term one. Uh, that the cost of turnover is just too much to be mm. selling and, and rebuying consistently in, in, in short periods. Um, but yeah, I love the cat lady analogy because absolutely <laughs> that's, that's a perfect demographic. <laughs> or cat man. <laughs> cat man too. It's so funny. I was actually walking my, my daughter um, to the station today to go to school. We do that. The little ritual is when she she's with me every, every second week and I walk her to the station and she was telling me she doesn't really like being on her own. That's why she wants me to, she is 16, right? Mm. She doesn't, I don't like being on my own mum. I like you walking with me and I'm laughing. I said, like, God, being on your own is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it is when you've got kids. <laughs> I know. You it's just a love lo- it. lovely break. <laughs> <laughs> a lot to be said for it. So living on your own in an apartment is great because lock up and leave. You know, there's a lot of- over, people over <clears throat> if you want to, don't if you don't. No yeah. one can come to your door in an apartment. You have to let mm. them in. You know, they can't get through that secure. You know, if you don't want them in, you're safe. You yeah. Just don't let them in. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> they can't tell if the car's there or if the lights are on. Yeah, don't answer the buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes back to that 3P, the individual requirements and individual desires. So um, all I can say, though, I do think, though, if you are planning a family at some point, I think really looking at buying an, a, a townhouse uh, as a first property is a very, very good alternative, mm. really. Yeah. 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 It is really a, a good stepping stone between. And, and as we say that, that um, high potential for scarcity, because there aren't many new complexes being built, um, it is actually setting townhouses up to be more popular in the future, which if all, all other things being equal and all of the investment drivers being there would um, have the potential for, for better capital growth over the long term as well. Uh, so definitely not easy to reproduce. No, and so definitely you have to look around you. It's the same sort of rules as for everything we talk about, scarcity, the potential for ongoing supply. If it looks like, well, this is Owner a townhouse. Owner appeal, not yeah. an investor and, stock. And if you're looking at a townhouse complex and it does look like, well, lots more can be built mm. and law will be the same, same, then no, don't go there. You know, be, go be looking for, you know, some apartments would be better than that. You know, if you've got a three bedroom ground floor apartment with a garden, for argument's sake, in an area where there were lots of townhouses and the apartment is scarce, you know, and unique single level living, et cetera, et cetera, then that might actually be a better decision. So you do have to still look at it on an individual case by case. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, but basis. hopefully this has just opened up your mind to another option because it isn't just about do I buy an apartment or do I buy a house? Because there are other options. There's pros and cons of everything. Um, So we hope that this has given you a little bit more of an open mind to look at other opportunities. Go and do that 3P mix, the the where to buy workshop, because that will really open up your mind to all the options that are available in the areas that you're interested in, the price range that um, that you have set for yourself or the borrowing capacity that you have. In this episode, we've covered a very small part of our 10-step online course for first-time buyers. If you would like to learn more about the process and how to buy without making a mistake, then head over to our website, www.homebuyeracademy.com.au. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss an episode. And if you like what you've heard today, please give us an iTunes review. Five stars would be wonderful. It will help others find us as well. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found this really useful. And if you have, please share the love with others who you know are in the same boat. We'll be back next week with some more priceless stuff.